Hello everybody, AVT here, and today I'm going to be making a video about heroics A to Z. So, I get asked a lot by a lot of people who are new to the game, what do I need to be doing to get into heroics, to prepare for heroics, to buff for heroics, how to run the heroics, and kind of the logistics behind it. So I know I've already made a bunch of videos covering the heroic instances themselves, and I've also made a video covering the prereqs, um, I'm sorry, the prequests for the heroics. So I'm not going to go into that right now. What I want to go into is more of the armor, weapons, buff requirements for these individual instances. So I'm going to make sure that the video is broken down into sections so that it's really easy if you're looking for one specific bit of information that you're able to find it pretty quickly. But let's go ahead and let's jump right in. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is armor and weapon prerequisites. So armor and weapon prerequisites for getting into heroics are actually not going to be that difficult. What I recommend you go ahead and get yourself is a set of Primus armor and an appropriate level 90 weapon. So let's briefly talk about the armor that you're going to want to be getting. And I know I've made an armor overview video, but this is specifically tailored to heroics. And it's actually going to be very similar to my armor video. But I recommend going out and getting yourself a Primus capped battle armor set. Um, at this point, it's not really going to matter a ton what you get built into the chest piece because you're just looking to get started. You're looking to get yourself rolling, get your heroic jewelry, which is really an important step once you've hit level 90. So this one would work just fine. It's got, you know, you've got your Primus cap battle, 6600, 6600, 5400, and it's got healing potency built in. You can see that right here, which is very nice. 2.1 million credits, and I know when you're starting out, that's going to sound like a lot, but that's actually pretty much the going rate for a set of Primus capped armor, and that's what you're going to be looking for because you really don't want to be buying multiple sets of armor right when you just started playing. And if you've done all of your legacy quests and all of your other quests up until this point, you should have enough money for one of these. And if you don't, I can explain how to get that kind of cash in another video just to get you started. And then, while I'm in this wonderful shop, because Wargear has everything that I need, you can get an appropriate level 90 weapon for whatever class it is that you're playing. So whether that be a commando and you're looking for, perfect, a heavy weapon, or maybe you're a bounty hunter looking for a rifle or a carbine or whatever that may be, just go ahead and pick one up. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. You don't need to come in here and spend 28 million credits on a capped weapon with mods in it where you've got 29 range critical chance. It's, don't worry about that right now. You just want to get started. You don't have to be the strongest guy in the group. You just need to be able to participate enough to where you're still, you know, dealing damage, having a good time, and you're working towards getting better gear. So this right here would work just fine. It's got a socket available. It's got 1150 DPS on it. Nothing special built in, but it's only 400,000 credits, and it's going to get you going. So those are my recommendations for your armor and weapon. Now, really quickly, I'm going to jump over and we're going to talk prequests. All right, so heroic prequests. So the original heroics for galaxies, before the Legends devs added any of this additional content that they've added, are the ones that are going to be giving you your jewelry sets. There are five of them. There is Exarchoon, Tusken King, Imperial Star Destroyer, Axe Min, and IG-88. And you're going to get the precast for all of them in a city here on Dathomir called Aurelia. And no, it is not on the map, and I'll make sure that the waypoint is down in the description below. And they're all going to come from inside of this guild hall here. And remember, like I said, there's five of them. So make sure that you go in here. I recommend picking up all five. I've made separate videos on how to do them each individually, but there's kind of an optimized way in which you you can run them all together. And what I do recommend doing, especially if you're new to the game, is getting a small group of people together to do them. Because, you know, as a veteran player to the game and knowing what to expect, you can do these solo. I can't say that it's the easiest thing in the world, but it's also not the most challenging. But if you're new to the game, I would recommend getting some help. That way it's not a miserable experience, especially because a lot of the drives for these instances can be very, very long. And if you're having a driveway out there for it, and then you die, and then you have to drive all the way out there again, it's just going to be a miserable experience. You're not going to have a good time. So I recommend getting a group of two to four people together and then doing all of these prequests. So I'm not going to cover anything more in depth on how to do these prequests. You can check out the individual videos I have for the rest of that information. Now, let's go on to traveling. So, once you have been to Aurelia, 
and you have talked to the travel coordinator there, you can talk to any Aurelian contact to instantly travel to the city of Aurelia. So, there's one located here in Cornette, there's also one in Moss Isley, and I believe there's a third. I can't remember where they are off the top of my head, so please don't hate me for that. But those are really the two that you're going to be using are the Moss Isley and Coronet one. So all you do is talk to them, you say, fine, I accept, take me there. You pay them a mis measly fee of 2,500 credits and do Aurelia. And then, once I'm in Aurelia, let's go ahead and let's take a look at our travel coordinator over here. It's probably not his name at all, but, you know, that's totally fine. It is this guy here, Travel Consultant, Maximilian. So he's the one you need to make sure that you talk to when you're in Aurelia to get instant travel access back here. But then, once you've done all that, you talk to Maximilian. He says, I can take you anywhere. You say, how much? And then you've got this little window here, and it gives you heroic encounters. And so every heroic encounter you've already done, or you've already um, completed the prequest for, excuse me, the Legends devs actually changed that, you are allowed to instant travel too. So as you can see, I haven't done the uh, new ones yet for the Jedi theme park on this character, but that's fine. These are the original five, excuse me, original four. You actually can't instant travel to ISD because it's in space. But anyways, you've got Moss Espa, you've got Darthamir, Darthamir, Dathamir, Locke, and Yavin 4. You're not going to be using this contact to travel to these. More often than not, there's going to be other ways to get there, but we can talk about that when we start talking about run order. So now, let's go ahead and jump into buffs. All right, let's go ahead and talk about buffs. So there's going to be a series of very important buffs that you're going to need before you get into heroic instances. And a couple of them I'm going to list, I consider optional, but we'll go ahead and go over those at the end. So I'm here in Moss Eisley because that's where you're going to get a lot of these. And they're going to be pretty straightforward. You have an entertainer buff, Medic buffs, Officer Stims. You need your Mustafarian Injector, Food or Drink, really depends on what you want to run. I would have a Familiar buff, My Favor of the Elders, and then the one that I consider optional is going to be Power Ups, and that's just because at the beginning they can be quite expensive, and it's a little bit hard to come up with the credits for those. That and the benefit of those power-ups, as opposed to a lot of the other ones, is going to be a little bit negligible when it comes to the original heroics in the game. So now I'll go ahead and I'll go a little bit more in-depth into the stat differences you're going to see from these buffs. So right now, my character is completely unbuffed. The only buff that I wasn't able to get rid of for the purpose of this video is my extended constitution. So keep in mind that that buff is increasing my constitution by 250, and I can't remove the darn thing. So these are what my stats look like right now completely unbuffed other than what I'm wearing. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and get all of these buffs, and then we'll take a look at this screen again, and I'll show you the difference, and then it'll be pretty self-explanatory why it's important to get these. Alright, so we are back, and we have all of these buffs now. As you can see, I've got just over two rows, and if you take a look at the stats, our stats have changed quite a bit. Our armor's gone up, our constitution's gone up, our constitution's gone up, everything's gone up, except for really luck. Luck didn't really move, but that's okay. I don't really care about having luck on my commando. So, that's it for buffs. Those are all the buffs that you need, and it's pretty straightforward how to get them. Um, the food and drink you will have to buy, the armor power-ups you're gonna have to buy, the familiar you'll have, uh, you just get it as a veteran reward for playing the game. Um, which you should get day one. Favor of the Elders, I believe you get your first week. The Mustafarian Injector, I have a video on that. And then when it comes to the Medic buffs, the Entertainer buff, and the Officer Stims, it's all here in Moss Eisley. So pretty straight forward. Now, let's go on to the run order of the original five heroics, because a lot of groups will expect you to know what order they're supposed to be running. So, let's talk run order for the original heroics. It's pretty straightforward once you've done it a time or two. But the typical group is going to do Tuscan King, Imperial Star Destroyer, Exar Kun, Axe Min, IG-88, in that order every single time. So to start Tuscan King, and that's in my Tuscan King video as well, but you're just gonna fly over to Mos Espa, and he's over at the combat hall. You talk to Cav, and you go ahead and you go inside, and that's going to start your entire pathway. So you're going to clear that instance, and when you're done, it's just going to kick you out in Mos Espa, 
From there, typically your group will want to fly out of the starport in Mos Espa, so you'll just gather around one of the starship terminals, and whoever your pilot is will invite you into space, and he'll take care of the rest or getting you, for getting you into ISD. Then when it comes to going to Exarcoon, when you're finished with ISD, it's going to spit you out in Coronet. And if you remember from earlier, the Aurelian contact I talked to is in Coronet. So you're going to talk to the Aurelian contact, and you're going to use him to travel to Exarcoon. Then, once you're done with Exarcoon, it's going to spit you out near the temple on Yavin 4. You're going to have to drive a little bit away. Hopefully one of your group members has an ITV, which can take you to Axvamin and IG-88. But if not, no big deal. You're going to use your own ITV. You're going to ITV to one of the starports. And then from there, you can go back to either Coronet or Moss Eisley. And then you can use the Aurelian Contact and then Maximilian to find your way to Axvamin and subsequently IG-88. And those two are exactly the same. So once you're done with AM, it's going to kick you out. And then <clears throat> yet again, you're either going to use a group member's ITV or you're going to ITV there yourself using the Aurelian Contact. And once you're done with IG-88, it just spits you back out in Nib Stronghold and you're done. So it's really that simple. So that's it for the run order. And last but not least, let's go ahead and talk lockout timers. So, lockout timers. Heroic instances can be done once per, per day, per 24-hour period, and that period resets at 12 a.m. MDT, which is Mountain Daylight Time. So, if you type slash show I in the chat, it'll bring up this window. Not only will it show you the things that your character is not flagged to do, but if you've completed an instance down here, it will show you the name of the instance and the amount of time remaining before you can go back into that instance, or if you're inside of the instance, it will show you that instance and the amount of time you have left to complete it before it closes. And it's really that simple. So just monitor your lockout timers and make sure that you're not accidentally trying to do the instances too quickly, because then you could really leave your group in a bad spot if you have to drop out and then they're missing a man to do heroics. But that's really about it. That's all that I wanted to talk about in this video was kind of the logistics behind running heroics, not so much the heroics themselves. So I hope this has answered a lot of questions for you guys. If you have any more, please feel free to pose them to me. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. If I don't know the answer, I'll go find it for you. So as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please feel free to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time.